You're listening to the Law of Attraction Radio Network. The secret to well-being is discovering the power that is your birthright, the power to create a happier, healthier life drawn from our own vast internal resources. Join Jules and her guests as they gently guide you to shift your perspective from the familiar negative to the divinely connected, a place that will not only positively impact your world, but possibly shift the planet. It's all right here on Law of Attraction Talk Radio. Well, welcome to Law of Attraction Talk Radio. I'm Jules from beautiful Southern California, and I'm so glad you could be with me because we have a very, very special show. I have a very special guest, and it makes me laugh when I think about it because he is none other than Dean Constantine, and he's my former husband. <laughs> And he is the world's biggest science buff. He loves anything and everything to do with science. He truly is a very, very brilliant man. And we were talking the other day because even though we've been divorced for 20 years, we're still very, very good, good friends. We often get together for lunch and we talk about the law of attraction. He is a big follower of Joe Dispenza and many, many, many more. He is absolutely brilliant when he talks. And I'm going, wow, just the other day we were having lunch and I'm going, wow, the audience really needs to hear this. It makes so much sense. It's like he's narrowed it down on how to really use it using the power of the mind. So I wanted to bring him on and we're going to have a great discussion with my former husband called Dean. He's also the grandfather of my precious grandchildren. And you know, I've have, I have never had children, uh, but I've got four of the best grandchildren in the world. And I love them as if they're my own. And as a matter of fact, they are my own. It was just one of my great manifestations that I even got them. So I am happy that Dean is here with me today. And we're going to have a good, good time. And I'm glad you're here too. This is going to be fun. So before I bring out Dean, I want to talk about this cruise. Oh my goodness. It is incredible. Incredible. I, <laughs> oh my gosh. We have got so many people coming. They're flying in from all over the world. We've got Myros that, and, and do you know, it's Myros is Roscoe. And we had him on the cover of our magazine and even on my show. And he died three, I mean, three days before the final article from Roscoe appeared in the March issue of last year's magazine. And here they are, they're on the cruise and we're talking about Myros and how the past, if we could just heal the wounded warrior in our bodies, we could really bring about world peace. That's What's so phenomenal? And then we have got Gary Temple Bodley and Joshua. We have got David Strickle and the stream of David. We have got Constance Arnold, Dr. Michael Mosley, my favorite. And we have got so many more. I know that I forgot. Oh, Dr. Uh, Buzz Edelberg, an uh, incredible law of attraction follower for years. Uh, even knows Esther Hicks, and he is coming on the cruise to talk about the law of attraction and health. Oh my goodness, we have got so, so many things. And of course, we have got uh, Myros coming on with two speakers. So it's going to be absolutely incredible. There's Roscoe right there. I just saw him in the... <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's going to be phenomenal. And like I said, people are flying in. We still need roommates. So don't be afraid to ask for that because I can guarantee you that the universe is on this cruise. <laughs> and you will be able to have a lifelong friend 
if you're willing to take a chance in room with somebody that you don't know because by the end of the cruise you're gonna love them don't forget we're going out of New Orleans to Cozumel Yucatan and then coming back with this whole new mindset of peace of love of joy and of manifestation so join us we would love to have you and with that we're going to take a fast commercial break and then we'll be right back with my extremely good friend dean constantine it's here it's hot and it's a must read it's the science behind the Law of Attraction magazine. Every issue brings you great articles and in-depth how-tos from all your favorite Law of Attraction experts, authors, scientists, and medical professionals. Go to lawofattractionmagazine.net. That's lawofattractionmagazine.net. Are you ready for a healthy 2019? Well, if you are, I've got an easy way to heal anything that ails you, and it's all from Mother Nature. If you're suffering from constant stress or issues with menopause, prostate, respiratory problems, IBS, psoriasis, and eczema, or even sleep issues, then Mother Nature's miracles are waiting for you. I know this works because I have resolved my health issues in 2018 using Dr. Todi Camancho herbal tinctures, and I have never felt better. These herbal products really do work. Instead of using toxic medications, try these organic herbal products and you will experience some amazing outcomes that Mother Nature intended since the beginning of time. Go to drtonycamacho.com to buy pre-made tinctures or to set up a consultation in which she can make a tincture specifically for your ailment. Go back to Mother Nature and Dr. Tony Camacho. Visit drtonycamacho.com. That is D-R-T-O-N-I-C-A-M-A-C-H-O.com. Well, welcome, Dean, to Law of Attraction Talk Radio. Now, this is fun for me, having my former husband, and I'm the interviewer. Now, be uh, nice, yeah. Dean. Don't say anything bad, because <laughs> I can edit this. Uh, there wouldn't be anything to say bad, so it's good. Okay, good. All righty. Um, so, Dean, you have been a longtime follower uh, of Joe Dispenza. And you're really into the law of attraction. You're really into manifesting things and you've done a phenomenal job. So I want to bring you on and talk about the science uh, that you get really excited about. And it's actually taught you how to manifest everything that you want. Like, like you just got married to this gorgeous gal. And you just, you just, I, I mean, it's just fabulous. Yeah. So you know how to, and you, you've got this huge, huge thing going on and oh, with business and everything. So it's like, okay, you know how to manifest. Well, Dean, we had lunch the other day and you started talking about the double slit experiment. Yes. And I thought it was absolutely wonderful how you put it in perspective of how manifestation occurs so okay so start with that okay so for people that don't understand what the double slit experiment is it's an experiment that was probably done over 100 years ago the first time and there was some very interesting um things that came out of that that actually tie into the law of attraction or manifesting as you would so how the law how the uh double slit experiment works basically is that uh, if you picture uh, shooting marbles at a wall and you had a vertical slit and there's a backdrop some of the marbles would make it through the slit and then they would leave an impression on the back wall and they would be the same as the slit right 
So they thought, okay, that's cool. So let's do two slits and see how many make it through one slit and how many make it through the second slit. Well, an interesting thing happened when they did that, okay? Uh, they ended up not getting two vertical lines on the back wall as assumed would happen because some of the balls would go through one slit and some through the other. They actually got what's called a wave pattern, okay? So a wave pattern means that uh, it wasn't actual, it created a, a multitude of lines on the back wall because a wave counteracts itself. As one wave comes, if you drop a, a piece of a stone into a pond, it creates a, a wave, right? Well, if you drop another one, each wave counteracts the other one. So then it becomes a wave. And okay. so you see that on the back wall. And they go, well, how is that possible, right? what's causing the wave, these, these, are, these are physical objects that are going through this, right? And that shouldn't, shouldn't appear, okay? This is on the molecular level though, okay? If you're doing it with solid objects like marbles, that won't happen, but when you go down to the quantum field, that's what happens, which means the molecule is a potential. It, has a, a, it hasn't decided what it has to be yet. So the scientists thought, well, let's observe and see, well, which side does the actual um, electron go through? And when they put observation to it, it ended up doing exactly what it's supposed to do. It, it became two lines instead of a multitude of lines. So it no longer was a wave. It now showed particles going through both slits. As they removed the observation again, it went back to being a wave. So what does that tell us? It tells us basically that uh, molecules don't solidify, don't become potentially uh, a photon or electron until they're observed. So that observation is what's causing reality. So if it's not being observed, does it exist? That was your question, right? Right. Can you see the forest if you're not observing it? Well, Technically, yes, because there's seven and a half billion people and they all believe forests exist, so therefore they exist. But if everybody stopped, then they wouldn't exist anymore. Isn't that interesting? So there's a thing called the flat earth. So we believe that the earth is round, but what if it's really flat? Well, and the majority of people believe that it's flat. Okay, they're not, not a majority. I think there's a, there's a small minority of people that are trying to assess that. But here's the thing. You have the cosmic sphere, you have the sphere that we're living on, and you have the quantum field. Two different places, okay? Now there are laws that govern all of those, right? So where we live in our material world, okay, there are certain laws, i.e. gravity. Right. You can't define that. You can't defy gravity unless you learn how to. That's why we have airplanes or helicopters. So once we learn how to harness certain laws, we can use them to our advantage in our world, in our material world. Okay. The quantum world, totally new set of laws. Okay. So in the quantum world, everything is a potential until it is observed. And that's what the double slit experiment basically points out to us. So they've done this now for over 100 years, and many laboratories, including MIT, have done very sophisticated uh, forms of the double slit experiment by bouncing uh, electrons off of mirrors and different things and trying to show different observations. And every time, it's always the same. If there's no observation, it is a wave of potential. If you observe it, it becomes a photon or an electron or whatever it is that they're shooting at it. So, so how does how how does it work with the law of attraction then? We have got to believe it in our minds first. No. See, that's what the confusing thing is that I, I, I want to show everyone that the so, double slit actually proves the law of attraction is real. Right. Well, it is. But here's how everything in our world is imagination, okay? Why do I say that? Nothing was created in our world that wasn't imagined first. In other words, our computers, 
our earphones, everything we use, someone imagined it first and then created it, right? But it was born it, through our thoughts first. Right, you have to imagine it, right? Otherwise, how do you create something? I mean, electricity always existed and until somebody imagined how to harness it and how to use it. It's always been there. But until someone figured out how to harness that power, it was what didn't exist for us, right? Right. Or for the people at the time. So the imagination is key, right? So we have that power of imagination. Now, we can't, as material beings, we cannot create planets and universes and all of that. And, but we can manip uh, manipulate the quantum world because there's that potential, but we have to do it through our imagination. Okay, so first we have to imagine it. what is it that we want, okay? Now, it's a simple concept, but it's extremely difficult to do. And the reason, there's reasons for that, okay? Because think about it for a minute. If you think about all the thoughts that go through your head on a daily basis, okay, what would happen if all of those things were to manifest instantly? Oh, we'd be in a lot of trouble. We wouldn't have room to live. <laughs> <laughs> you know, because our fears, our anxieties, our whatever, you know, would be instantly manifest. And here we would have to deal with that. So one minute we're happy, one minute we're sad, one minute this one. Okay, so all of that can't happen. So there's the reason for that blockade to be there. What we have to learn is how to break through that right? and how to utilize that imagination and then create what it is, whether we attract it or whether we create it doesn't, it's, it's immaterial, but it comes to you. Okay. So the right. point is we call it a law of attraction because it comes to you. But here's the thing. If you imagine something now, remember, it can't be a daydream because we daydream all the time. And daydreams are just like going to sleep and dreaming. It's not, it's not creating that, that, that potentiality that you need for it to come to fruition, right? But if you can imagine something, but then you have to also feel it, okay? The feeling is what really, because if you're not feeling it, you can imagine all day long, but if it's not really in your, your deep core feeling, it's not going to materialize. And there's a reason what I explained it's the reason you, because otherwise everything would manifest right away. So therefore that's the challenge that people are having. And that's why a lot of people say, Oh, I've done, I've tried to try and listen. I've read and done all these things and I can't make it work. Well, you are actually making it work, but you don't know that you're making it work. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Because all of the authors and all of the, the really smart people and books that I've read about all this stuff, it basically said, it, everything in our lives is us pushed out, okay? Which means on a daily basis, we're manifesting everything. Now, we believe our lives to be the, the way they are, where we live, what we do, the people we interact with, and all of that. Well, of course, that is because that's how we feel, and that's how we think our life is. And when bad things happen to us, if you can think back at some point in time, you either worried about it, you were frustrated about something, uh, some sort of fear factor in your psyche was there that created that, you know, oh, I got in a car accident today. Well, why? Because, you know, for weeks I was thinking about, that. you know, what if this terrible thing happened to me? Okay, well, what <laughs> happens? Okay. It's a very, very challenging thing to happen, to, to keep the focus because we're so ingrained by the time we're born, we're taught, we go to school, our parents, everybody influences us. So we have a certain set of beliefs. Those beliefs hold true, regardless until we can break free of them. And so the hard part for people to understand is that it takes practice. It's like going to the gym and having to work out. You can't go for a week or two and think, oh, God, I'm going to lose 20 pounds and, <laughs> Darn it. and build all this muscle and blah, blah, blah. No, we get wore out and we, get, we psych ourselves out and then we stop doing it. Well, this is the same thing. And so you have to keep at it. You have to, a lot of these authors talk about it, including Dr. Joe Dispenza. You have to get into your mind. And you have to keep practice, practice, practice. So 
like Dr. Joe, when he got hurt uh, on his bike race, right? And broke his what did he do? back, yeah. He rebuilt his back because he was laying flat on his face for six to eight weeks. And because he was a chiropractor and he understood the mechanics of the back of the spine, he could visualize that and he could repair that. But it took him time, hours, hours and hours and hours. And eventually got through it. So what he teaches people now is how to do the same thing. So to manifest, you really must, you have all this potential out here from the quantum world. You have to put into your mind the visualization of what it is that you want. Okay. And here's another stumbling block. Some people start, oh, I want to have a million dollars, let's say. Okay. But or win the, win the lottery, yeah. But, but there's, a, there's a tinge of fear that's deep down in there and are the doubts that creep up that we don't realize that's what blocks it, right? So what do we have to do? We have to constantly visualize ourselves having that. Not that we are going to get it, that we already have it. And then if you're successful at doing that, boom it will manifest into your life. Anything doesn't matter. So the other key that I found was that you can't be anxious about it. You know, so it's very easy to manifest stuff that you don't really care about because you don't really care the outcome because you're not fretting over it. You're not worried about it. You're not, you know, it's not constantly, oh my God, am I going to get this? Is this going to happen? Blah, blah, blah. You don't have that. There's another very famous author that I read and I've kind of followed a lot. His name is Neville Goddard and he did an experiment and it's a ladder experiment. So a group of people came to his um, symposium and he told them, so go home, write on notes all over your head, place them all over your house. I will not climb a ladder, right? But every night before you fall asleep, visualize yourself climbing a ladder. And people would end up doing that after three days they would climb some sort of ladder. Well, they weren't, they did it because it wasn't a big deal. It wasn't something that was like, oh, you know, they didn't care whether they did it or not and they forgot about it. So it manifested. See, that's the whole point. But when we want something like a new car, a new house, a, a new wife or <laughs> a new whatever, <laughs> you fret about it, you, you, you constantly think about it. And so you worry and that worry blocks it. Because right. That's part of the uh, safety zone of us not being able to manifest instantly. Not saying that we cannot manifest since we can if you train yourself properly. And that's where the masters come in, right? Like Buddha and Jesus and all that. Jesus could manifest instantly, right? He could cure somebody because he had that knowledge and the belief. He doesn't have all those fears and anxieties and all that going in. So he could do that. That's open to anybody. But training ourselves from the way we've been trained our whole lives and the way we've been educated in. And of course, our sensory perception is what we use to say, well, this is reality. But it really isn't, is it? Right. No. No. So the point is, is that if you can set your senses aside and you can visualize, and a lot of people also <laughs> have done this too, you, you go, okay, I can create all this stuff. Well, then you start thinking about all the things you want. Like, <laughs> you start really overwhelming yourself and you're thinking about this and this and this. And it all jumbles up. And it doesn't work. You have to, you know, in the early times, you have to really kind of focus. What is it most important for me to create and work on that and then let it come and start small because a lot of people want to start big. And it's very, very difficult because they get discouraged very easily. Just like, like I said, going to the gym, you go two weeks and then, oh, God, I've got to go to the gym again. And nothing's happening. And in fact, I gained weight. Well, of course, right? So the point is, is that it takes a lot of mental practice. There was another author that I read. His name's um, Hanel. I forget his first name now, but he wrote, he had a 21-week um, correspondence course because he was back in the 30s and 40s and people he would sign up for him and he would send them a correspondence every week and it was an exercise and his the majority of the book talks about it 
because he took all 21 weeks and made a book out of it, of how to train your mind to visualize. Okay. In fact, one of the exercises was taking a battleship and visually recreating it in your mind backwards. You know, take the ship and then break it down to all of its components. And all the way back to where did the money come from? You know, Congress appropriated it, blah, blah, blah. So those exercises are key to getting people to focus on what it is or training the mind to visualize properly. And once you can conquer that, then the law of attraction manifests and it becomes child's play. When you see people that are extremely successful, and not every one of them, because a lot of them have anxieties, but the ones that have sort of self-made people, they don't worry as much because they realize they have mastered that portion of it. They know how to control their minds and not allow fears and anxieties and all these doubts to creep in and stop them from creating what they do. Now, time, on the other hand, you know, some things take time to create. That's only because of us. Because time is an illusion. It really doesn't exist. Okay. Right, right. It has to exist in our world for a reason. Because we have to have the past, because those are the things we've learned. Otherwise, you know, if we burn our hand and there was no past, we wouldn't remember it. And we'd have to relearn it every time. Right. So consequently, most people, what do they do? They live in the past. They think of memories of the past. Or they think in the future, what things that they want. But the reality, there's only the now. Right. Everything is the now. It's always now. It's never the future because it doesn't exist yet. And the past is already gone. But it's important for us in our sensory perception worlds that we know that's how we learn because we have to remember back, oh yeah, if I stick my hand on something hot, it's gonna burn me and I don't wanna do that. Uh, so that's very important. But of course, a lot of the negative things that happen to life, which are the learning process, you have to be able to re recollect those things in order to not or avoid them in the future, which a lot of people repeat those problems, right? Right, yeah. recurring patterns, yeah. Right. So you have to retrain your brain, so that's, the importance. So what the double slit tells us is that yes, reality does not exist until it is observed. So that's fundamental, right? And so that means that we have that power to create anything. And we have the free will to do that. So that's important as well. No one can tell us, people can manipulate us all day long. But nobody can truly tell us what to do because we have that free will to manifest what we want, when we want, once we learn how to harness that power. So That's very fascinating. You put it really well. I've always noticed that for the big things in my life, it's always taken a period. And this is the average. Every two years, it will pop up. But you're okay. right. In the key that I totally forget about it. And then it, it happens in two years. Okay, so now in your belief, it's a two-year period. Yeah, it is. It is. <laughs> I mean, yeah, it is my belief because that's been my experience. So that's I know I, I haven't. That was actually all before the law. What I know about the law of attraction. So in right. that sense, you know, it's just perpetual. Now I can accomplish things, but. I'm still at that two year mark, you know, for big things that I want. Yeah, it takes me about two years. Right, right. And that's because that's what's ingrained in you. That is part of your belief system. That's part of your sensory perception. Now, if you were able to allow yourself to get past that, it wouldn't do that, see, because time, is, it can instantly create if you know how to do it properly again. If you can get past all of those things, um, and everybody has their own little whatever quirks about it, um, then you can do it uh, much quicker, much uh, easier, as they say. Right. But again, it's a mental state. It's being able to control your mind. So a lot of these teachers talk about going into the silence, right? And what does that basically mean? Well, what that means is it's a meditation, right? And so what is meditation? 
meditation really boils down to this. Stop thinking. <laughs> okay. I love it. Yeah. All right. So how long can you stop thinking? Not very long. Most people, uh, a few seconds, a minute, and it's a long time. All right. I work at it all the time. You know, I'm there and I'm like, clear my mind. Don't think about anything. And the next thing I know, I'm thinking about something, you know, but you can't fault yourself for that. It's just human nature, right? It's the way the mind works. But the training is, is how to stop thinking. When you do that, you eliminate that need for time. Okay. The other thing is you say, okay, I want this big thing to happen. If you can, you, you, your, your uh, desire is out there. You put it out. You say, this is what I want. You have to feel strongly about without changing your mind. This is what another thing a lot of people do, and might include myself, is you, oh, I want this, but then you start thinking, well, I could do with this, or oh, maybe I could get away with that. You know, you start downplaying it, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. So because, why is that? Well, because you're afraid you're not going to get it. That's Where's right. There, right? So when the fear creeps in, well, what happens? It's not going to manifest, right? Or not going to manifest the way you truly desired it in the very beginning. So that's the hard uh, portion of it. So creating is easy. Having Using the law of attraction to bring something to you is actually quite simple. But making it work is the difficult part. That's going to the gym every day, working out, working out, meditating, clearing your mind and practicing not thinking about things, all right? Or in some cases, like uh, uh, a Tesla or some of these other people, they sit there and they actually design a whole system in their minds, and then they make it. They've actually tested in their minds, and then they before they build it. Tesla used to test all his experiments before he actually built them. So he truly knew how to uh, manifest what he wanted. Of course, he didn't know how to manifest money. Right. Right. Because it wasn't important to him. His design was the most important exactly. feeling that exactly. he could come up with. Not money wasn't, didn't attract him. Right. That wasn't important to him. You're absolutely right. What was important was to build the experiments that he was doing. And he was marvelous at doing that. Again, because why he, he visualized it, he tested it, he knew every little intricate detail about it in his mind before he actually built it, okay? And so he was successful every time. A lot of, some people are able to do that. Again, it takes training. All right, so someone says, okay, well, can I be a gymnast? All right, well, you're middle-aged, you're out of shape, and um, you don't exercise, and you're not limber. Can I manifest me being a gymnast? No. Why? Because you don't feel that. It's not in you. you or else you would have been. Exactly. Right? And so things that, you know, we're amazed at what gymnasts can do, you know, they control themselves and do all these things. Well, because one, they started out practicing it. They didn't start from the end. They started from the beginning. And their bodies were trained to do this and they can now once they've exceeded a certain point it's effortless for them to do it right yeah it's like living normally for them it is not it, it's not something that's new right exactly right so that's the trouble and i've you know talked to my friends and i introduce them to this and I explain it to them and what i invariably find is that people will always default to what they know or their senses, right? So uh, the way they've been brought up, the beliefs that they hold true, all of these things play a part or a role in, in stopping, but it really doesn't stop. You see, that's the trick because we are always manifesting. We are always attracting to us. We just don't realize it, right? When we get angry, when we have down days, when we have, of course, no one can live positive every day because it's just the material world, right? And we're surrounded by all these things that happen to us, but all these things that happen to us are brought to us. They're attracted to us because of the way we are. 
because of our beliefs and because every one of the seven and a half billion people on the planet are doing the same thing every day right so yeah. all of us believe we're on earth all of us believe we're in a universe all of us believe most of us believe the planets are round <laughs> we circle the sun <laughs> some people don't if the majority of people decided that the earth was flat then it would be all right but i don't know what the purpose of that would be anyway <laughs> i don't either <laughs> but the point is it is what is the okay so there's a universal belief right well, we don't know if we're the only people out here. You know, there may be others. We don't know that. So whoever is manifesting the whole universe, it's a collective, right? Then we bring it down to our planet, and the people on the planet are manifesting where we are. And that's the traditional beliefs. And then you break that up into countries and then into towns and then into communities and then into families and then into individuals. Collective consciousness. Right. So that's how reality is for us, right? So you have to, the key for me is getting, letting go of your senses on the outside, going within, clearing your mind, stop thinking as long as possible and train yourself to make it longer and longer and longer. And the more you can do that, if you have clear intentions of things that you want, i.e. big things, those things will come to fruition simple as that <laughs> it is, and, and to play another important factor is the surrendering to it okay because when you surrender you cease the belief that you can't have it or it really doesn't matter what is going to happen is going to happen and i'm going to be fine because i know it's going to be perfect for me sometimes that's easier to get through the doubts by just letting it go and surrendering yeah yes now some people walk around here and and they don't they're just whatever circumstance happens to them they just go with their flow right they don't they're not trying to create anything really they are creating but they're just letting well, hey, whatever happens happens to them okay those are those people then you have another set of people that are just really focused on what they want. Those are the athletes and you know the big business people and stuff like that. They're very focused on what they want and they work at that and they create those things for themselves. Uh, and then there's everybody in between, right? So you can tell uh, where people are at by just what's going on in their lives, right? So uh, the point is, is that everybody has access to this. Everybody. Not, not yeah. everybody uses it, though. See, that's the thing. Yeah. And trying to learn how to use it is extremely difficult. And there's tons of books and tons of teachers out there. And they're all virtually saying the same thing, right? And, but the thing of it is, the hard part is, how do I utilize that information? See, and some people, you know, they get into reading a lot. And some of the people that I... I follow a lot. There's a Richard Dotz. He's written a lot of books. Um, and he's like, you know, you got to do it. You can't just read about it all the time. You got to, once you understand it, you got to put it into practice. Otherwise, it's not going to work. Right? That's right. And, and I don't think, and that you brought up a really good point here. I don't think people realize that it does take work to manifest. We're just not standing there wishing upon a star. Correct. It really does mean that you have to get down to the nitty gritty. And that has to do with your brain. It has to do with meditation. It has to do with letting go your, your limiting beliefs and know that through this double slit experiment, it just proved to us, yes, it is possible. We are the creators of our lives. We are such powerful beings. Absolutely. And Absolutely. people don't realize it because they're just seeing their own 3D world. Right, right. A lot of people talk about the conscious and the subconscious. Um, your subconscious being the portion of your consciousness that uh, creates. And that I believe to be you know, true. Your subconscious actually works to keep you alive, right? Mm -hmm. because we don't think about breathing we don't think about our hearts beating we don't think about the blood flowing through our system and 
all the things that happen internally, those are just automatic. Well, something is controlling that, right? Right. Um, but it's an order taker. As some people believe it's a total order taker. So if you can uh, uh, go to that subconscious, if you can line up with it, as they say, and give it the order, and if it knows that that's really what you want, then it will give it to you. Okay. <coughs> Again, but it has to be with what you just said. You you got to get past your limiting beliefs. You got to be. You got to feel it real. You got to feel yeah. it as if you already have it, right? And that's where we get ourselves into the into not a problem, but into the sphere of where uh, it doesn't work for me. Well, it is working. You just don't realize that what's coming to you is what you believe. What you believe is real to you, right? What's real to you and what's real to me are totally different things. And the same with anybody else, right? We're all in our own little space. Another key I think that's real important, uh, Neville talks a lot about this. The best time to manifest is just before you fall asleep and just before you wake, well, you're waking up as you're waking up. And the reason for that is, I guess, because you haven't, as you get into that sleep mode, if you can not fall asleep for a few minutes and focus by not thinking, <laughs> right, and visualize your what you want, and if you can hold on to that, because I've listened to a lot of his lectures, and you know, people said, "Oh, I want this house. I want to live here. I want this. I want that. I want a car. I want money." And he teaches them that methodology to use, and in most cases, it works for them mm -hmm. because that point of in between worlds right because our brains turn off when we go to sleep now some other portion of our uh, existence takes over and we dream you know we go off and do things or whatever but the the body relaxes and it goes to sleep and we're totally unconscious per se at that point in time so just before that happens you're like in between that world and you can get to that subconscious and you can say okay yeah this is what i want but you can't do it with anxiety and fear or um you know yeah anxiety and fear basically right otherwise it just it's not gonna it, it goes no no you're too afraid what why i can't give you this because right. I remember that wall i told you you can't manifest instantly because otherwise everything would happen immediately and all your fears would come to fruition right away and then you'd be in trouble if everybody's fears came to fruition instantly, right? Yeah, you know, when I uh, used hypnosis on clients and they were sports, I would have them listen to the CD that we made together of their hypnosis at night so that they can fall asleep seeing them win their sport actually going up to that podium and accepting the ward actually going through the places that they were so fearful of and having that go smoothly right that and that was right before they went to sleep so that and i've seen it they they were all winners right. i have seen that to be absolutely true so what you bring up is is so imperative that right. if you really want to change something, you do have to do it while you sleep or before, right before you sleep. Right, right. Because once you fall unconscious, you're not thinking anymore. Right. Now, some people say you can train your subconscious during your sleep, and I, I don't know that. But uh, I do know that there are golf pros yes. that teach you how to visualize your golf swing, and they improve people. They've done experiments at some university where they've taken three sets of uh, people. And they said, okay, one group, uh, you're not going to do anything. The second group, you're going to go to the gym for two weeks and you're going to work out. And the third group, they said, you're going to visualize going to the gym for two weeks and working out. And they measured everybody at the start and they measured everybody at the end. Well, obviously, the group that didn't do anything, nothing happened. The group that went to the gym, they had some gains. The group that visualized had the same gains. But wait a minute, they didn't go to the gym. They just thought about it. So there you go, again. Uh, but it, it takes a, a period of training in your mind. You have to be focused. 
if you go to the gym for 30 minutes and you lift weights, you got to meditate for 30 minutes lifting weights. Right. 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 You can't go for two seconds. Okay, I lifted a couple of weeks. I'm done. No. You have to practice. You have to practice every day, every day, every day. And sometimes they say three times a day is really necessary. Uh, but definitely before you fall asleep, before you get out of bed, because you're still in that limbo, you're starting to wake up and you're kind of in that in-between zone. And if you can get your mind trained to do that, um, you're going to have major success. That is so important. And one of the things that I don't think I've ever talked about on the show is the fact that it's not overnight. You're not going to lose your limiting beliefs. It's, it does take practice. Well, think and, of your life and how long you've been told those things. Yeah, you're exactly. So those things, right? So, yeah. So how can you let go of them so quickly? You know, because reality, well, my eyes tell me this, my, when I feel it, I feel this, you know, da, da, da. like in Joe's case, you know, here is broken back and he's in pain. Right. Uh, that, that's reality. Right. But he healed himself without surgery and he walked when everybody said, you're never going to be out of a wheelchair. Yeah. Doctors were shocked. Yeah. Right. So how do you do that? Well, he did it mentally. Tell me it doesn't work. <laughs> yeah, and by the way, I just want to let everybody know, he, Dean's in Palm Springs, right down the street from where Dr. Joe Dispenza had the accident to begin right. with. <laughs> right, right, right. It's like you're living right there. <laughs> well, he's having major success. I know he's got a lot of uh, seminars he does, and he, I see a lot of YouTube videos of success stories of people that I saw a quadriplegic stand up out of his wheelchair that so he was a quadriplegic. So how do you do that? Uh, so it is real, but again, it goes back to how much time are you willing to put into it? How much effort? And can you clear your mind? Can you stop thinking, you know, it really that boils down to that. Um, and that's, I think, where most people go, ah, oh, it's not working for me. Well, it does work. Um, and it is working for you because you're manifesting everything around you right now. Right. But it's also how bad do you want it? Because like you said, it's the passion. It's the desire. It's the emotion that makes you crave it even more. And that craving is what sets you on the road. It's that emotion. To do it with just blank emotions is not going to get you anywhere. You have to have that desire. Right, right. It's got to be big. It's got to be, yeah, it, it, you have to really uh, focus and, and training. It really comes down to this training. So once you can master that, I don't think like the world is your oyster. You can do whatever you want. I don't yeah, know. yeah, right. I remember uh, D. Wallace on my very first cruise for the Law of Attraction, the very first one, I'm going, I'm, I'm really nervous. You know, I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> and she's stopped me she says i want you to jump up and down and go ah oh, this is fabulous this is absolutely fabulous and do you know what oh my god that changed the whole picture and right. all of a sudden it started coming together and and now i'm on my uh, 11th cruise <laughs> Yeah, it's really got so. together. <laughs> yeah, exactly right. Exactly but right. It's the emotion that gets the universe going. It gets the all of the um, vibration around you just changes, and you're in a different mind path. And it's really incredible that enthusiasm you, you, that you, helps. You, uh, you hit on something right there that's uh, important for people to understand as well. Remember the old saying: "Be careful what you wish for." Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So here's, and here's you know another favorite line that I used to like to say also is the universe has no no sense of humor <laughs> or has a sense of humor I'm sorry it has a sense of humor because if you leave blanks it's going to fill in the gaps yeah oh that's so very you go you go oh I want this but then you don't really say how you want it mm -hmm. or where you want it to be or how you know you leave all these little open areas and all of a sudden it comes to you and you go, well, wait, I wanted that, but I didn't want it like this or God, why does this happen? You know, well, that's because you left it wide open. So what does that get back to? Like Tesla, 
imagining every intricate detail of what he wanted. Because if he left blanks, how is this experiment going to work? It's not. So when you want to manifest money or a car or a home or whatever, you really have to work at visualizing the whole thing. Now, right. the how is not important. And that's key as well, because if you start thinking about you cannot tell the universe how to bring it to you because you don't have the intellectual cap capability of understanding all the intricacies and all the things. And we call it the butterfly effect, right? The butterfly okay. collapses wing over here and something happens over there. Well, it's the same thing, right? So let the universe do that portion of it. Right. But what the end result is what's important for you. And that you have to really focus on because, and not in a, in a fearful uh, with anxiety or anything like that just kind of like a, sort of a nonchalant yeah this is what i want but this is exactly what i want and how i want it to be so then it will bring that forth for you but it's important not to try to figure out the how because when you're trying to do the hows you're trying to tell the universe how to do it and when you do that it will do it the way you're telling it but it's going to be a mess right it's not going to be the way you think because you don't understand what people have to connect, what events have to occur, what sort of, you know, because it's so vast and so big, our minds aren't capable of doing that. So leave that up to the universe. Yeah. And right. there's, a, there's a really great test. You take a, to, a potato mm -hmm. and you take a plastic straws, which is outlawed in California right now. But anyway, you take it. And the idea is to put that plastic straw through the potato without breaking it. Right. So that's the thing when people think about how the, is that going to happen it won't go through well that's exactly but, right but if you just do it without thinking about it it will go through and it's, how is that possible it's because you don't see it you don't you, you just see the end result of right. the the straw through the potato you don't see it going through and right. that's where the mind will stop right that that's a technique that's actually taught in in the martial arts so these guys that break bricks and all these wood and all that stuff they're taught not to see their hand hitting whatever it is the object they want to break they see it actually at the end uh-huh and when i when my i didn't realize years, that yeah when my younger years i actually studied it and the, my karate teacher was explaining that to me. And the first few times I tried to break a brick, actually, um, hurt my hand, right? <laughs> Just because you're seeing your hand hitting the brick. So see your hand through the brick. And the, the minute I was able to do that, it went right through and I didn't feel a thing. So you go, wow, okay. Again, same principle here, right? So... If you have to think of the end result of what it is that you're trying to manifest to bring into your life or to attract to you, and you have to be very concise about what it is. In that case, it was me breaking the brick. Okay. But if it's whatever it is you're manifesting, you want to see that end result and believe it that you already have it. Because it already exists. Everything already exists. It's just being brought to you. Or you're allowing yourself to go to it. Right. It's the same thing. So yeah, that's key. Key. Again, this is absolutely brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. This um it's the little things in the law of attraction that we sometimes overlook that keep us from getting exactly what we want. So where does the frequency and the vibration come into it? Well, everything is frequency and vibration, right? everything has a frequency because everything is vibrating right you're talking the quantum level now so you know uh, atoms and molecules come together they form chains and then those chains become whatever objects they're supposed to be right now we can manipulate that we've learned over the years through science and other ways to manipulate elements and create stuff with that right but we can't create the actual element it exists right so therefore, everything exists. We have to manifest what we want, right? Very everything well is electrical. That's the other thing. So another, you, you were asking me earlier, I think, 
about uh, the universe. And my belief is I follow the electric universe because everything is electrified. There, there's what's called Birkeland currents throughout the universe that supply plasma, con there are conduits and supply plasma to the stars and the planets and so on and so forth. So everything is based on electricity. And okay, with electricity, you have magnetism. With electricity, um, that's what creates the motions. Everything is moving. Nothing is standing still, right? Nothing is standing still. Um, electrons are moving around, you know, atoms, right? Um, your atoms are comprised of protons and neutrons, you know, positive and negative. When you get to that level, though, again, it, all of that is potential. Right. Right? Until it is observed, and then it will become something, right? The simplicity of the double slit is basically telling us that unless we observe it, it's going to be a potential. And it will remain a potential until we observe it. Now, when we observe it in that experiment, it only becomes the electron being shot through the slit because that's all it is. We're not manipulating anything. We're just visually going, okay, what are you? It says, I'm an electron, if you watch it. And then when you're not watching, it says, I'm a wave. <laughs> so there you go. Yeah. So everything is potential on that. And that's a whole another level of laws, though, right, that cannot be broken but can be manipulated, such as gravity here, such as electricity here. We can't see electricity, but we know it exists, right? Right. So all of those things are stuff that we can utilize here, and how do we do it? Here, visual, mental, yeah. right? Yeah, exactly. And it doesn't matter whether it's our body, our bodies are electrical, right? Right. Right, everything is, everything is. Everything we touch, we get static charge. Oh, yeah. Everything. Yes, everything is moving. Everything in our solid objects is molecules moving around. Electrons spinning around the molecule, that's, mo that's motion. But it's a solid in our world. It's a material world. So why can't you create or why can't you attract whatever it is you want? You can. You, just you know, can. You have to know how to use it properly. And it takes practice because we are so ingrained with all the stuff that we've been taught. Right. If we took kids and we taught them at a very early age, because I think the Jesuit says, if I have your child from year one through seven, I can uh, make the, human, the, the adult. And that's very true, because that's when they learn everything. If you taught kids at an early age this system, there's nothing they couldn't do. That's right. There would be nothing they couldn't do, because that would ingrain in them the proper way to manifest stuff, right? they would be unstoppable. Wow, this is a great show. Oh, well, okay, well, <laughs> ding. <laughs> you did good, you did good. And I got to have you back on the show because I think this is everyday language. And it's so easy to understand. And we have to be constantly reminded of it to overcome our beliefs. Right. And to practice, practice, practice. That's so important. So thank you so much for coming onto my show. My pleasure. Anytime. I appreciate it. Thank you for having me. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> thank you. Thank you so much for joining us. We'll be back next week with another great show from Law of Attraction Talk Radio. If you'd like to comment on tonight's show, send an email to jules at loaradionetwork.com. And have a great week.